Why do creationists have a problem with evolution? TalkOrigins.org is a major evolution apologist website. From their own website, they give the reason for their existence. Quote, the primary reason for this archive's existence is to provide mainstream scientific responses, remember those words, to the frequently rebutted assertions of those advocating intelligent design or other creationist pseudosciences. Most evolutionists on the net will prolifically quote from the Talk Origin site. So to demonstrate the absurdity of evolution theory and the reason for the frustration that creationists have with the dishonest pseudoscience of evolution theory, we too will quote prolifically from that particular site. From Talk Origin's website, their own words. Most non-scientists seem to be quite confused about precise definitions of biological evolution. The confusion is due in large part to the inability of scientists to communicate effectively to the general public and also to confusion among scientists themselves about how to define such an important term. Translated, people are confused about evolution definitions because number one, scientists themselves are unable to communicate effectively and number two, because scientists themselves are confused about how to define such an important term. Agreed. We agree with you on this. Talk Origins website continues. What exactly do biologists mean when they say that they have observed evolution or that humans and chimps have evolved from a common ancestor? Well, the author goes on to answer these two questions in his own words. Let's begin with the first one. What exactly do biologists mean when they say that they have observed evolution? Their answer, quote, when biologists say that they have observed evolution, they mean that they have detected a change in the frequency of genes in a population. Often the genetic change is inferred from phenotypic changes that are heritable. Translate it. So what does observed evolution mean? It means gene frequencies have changed within a population over time and that they have been observed. We agree with that. That's real science. Within a population, there are changes. Within the human population, for example, this has been observed many times in many ways. But never has one population been observed to change into another population. We'll get back to that in a moment. But also, he says, that often the genetic change is inferred from phenotypic changes that are heritable. Again, we agree. Phenotypic heritable changes are things like hair color, weight, height, muscle tone, facial features, etc. We have observed these kinds of changes, changes that occur due to environmental changes or heredity or nutrition within a population. So far then, we are evolution believers. Now back to the author's own words. When biologists say that humans and chimps have evolved from a common ancestor, they mean that there have been successive heritable changes in the two separated populations since they became isolated. Translated, successive heritable changes in the two separated populations. Yes, we observe changes in chimps and we observe changes in humans due to the gene frequency changes, heritable phenotypic changes. And yes, they are separated populations, chimps and humans. But here is the clincher, the words, since they became isolated. These words assume that chimps and humans were ever related or came from a common ancestor in the first place. But there is no indisputable scientific proof of this assertion only speculative assumption, starting from the premise that we must have had a common ancestor. But this is not real science. This is prejudiced speculative theory. Now, here are the questions that many evolution apologists don't like, but if we're going to speak honestly, they have to answer them. If we did have a common ancestor, then where did our common ancestor come from according to evolution? Ah, now we are getting into origins theory, that dark fairy tale land that modern evolution apologists just seem downright embarrassed to venture into. 
For here is what origins theory says in a nutshell. Origins began with non-living material 4.5 billion years ago through successive millions of years non-living material became living material starting with a chemical soup but this is a biogenesis an embarrassing anathema to the modern evolutionist but it is their theory nonetheless from this soup then emerged single cell organisms from there multicellular organisms emerged the sponge according to this theory was the first multicell organism thus the mother of all multicell organisms including man from the sponge evolution proceeds to the flatworm and then to the fish and to the amphibian and then finally to the reptiles the reptiles branch off in three different branches of reptilian creatures one of which becomes the first mammals a rat-like creature then finally to a lemur type creature to a common ancestor then of the chimp and the man and there you have the fairy tale from abiogenesis to a sponge to a chimp to a man through a common ancestor this dishonesty of evolution quote science is that you have a group who vehemently deny that origins has anything to do with the study of evolution but that simply is not the truth it would be wonderful if evolution science simply stuck to the study of genetic changes within populations over great periods of time there is much observable scientific phenomena and it is an interesting field of scientific study i don't know of a single creationist who would object creationists are not opposed to real science science that meets the criteria of scientific method taught in every third grade classroom but origins teaching does not meet the criteria of scientific method and when the leap is made that one kind of population becomes another kind of population over time like from a sponge to a worm to a reptile to a rat to a man well then evolution postulations quickly digress into pseudoscience but alas this is what origins and evolution teaches undeniably irrefutably and this is the creationist problem with evolution teaching this is the part that simply is not demonstrable observable testable repeatable or falsifiable back to the origins website their words but once we realize that evolution is simply a process that results in heritable changes in a population spread over many generations it seems a little silly to pretend that this excludes religion ah but we have just demonstrated that this is not the truth this is not all that evolution teaches and religion has little to do with it for the creationist who simply wants to see some real science if evolution were simply the process just described it would be no problem to the creationist but it is not simply the process just described and the evolutionist who says it is is simply ignorant or purposely deceitful then this talk origins website page ends with these disingenuous words when someone claims that they don't believe in evolution they cannot be referring to an acceptable scientific definition of evolution because that would be denying something which is easy to demonstrate it would be like saying that they don't believe in gravity first you yourself admitted that even scientists cannot communicate nor agree upon an acceptable definition of evolution and you go to great lengths in your article to say this easy to demonstrate again yes microevolution is genetic changes within populations those were your very words it would be like not believing in gravity you said well but gravity is demonstrable the effects are observable it's repeatable and falsifiable that's why it's called the law of gravity that's why it is deemed to have scientific value on the other hand mr evolutionist please demonstrate for me a non-living material developing life characteristics without intelligent input of any type please demonstrate for me where any non-living material has become living material because lightning struck it or it was exposed to ultraviolet radiation please demonstrate for me one population of a living thing actually becoming another completely different kind of population of a living thing like a sponge to a worm to a fish but you see none of these things have ever been demonstrated nor can they be and they are the very foundation for origins and origins is the very foundation for evolution postulation 
None of these things have ever been actually observed, nor can they be repeated, demonstrated, or falsified. And this is why real science and creationists have a problem with evolution. It is a problem for us, a really big problem.